Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we will review what was covered in week three. So we looked at order of operations and operations with decimals. So this acronym BIDMAS tells us the order in which we apply operations such as subtraction, multiplication, and all that. So we perform any operation in the brackets first. That's all brackets do in maths, change the order of operations. Afterwards, we do any powers. Now, division and multiplication are the same rank. So we don't always perform division first. We perform whichever of these occurs first from left to right. And similarly for addition and subtraction, we don't always perform addition before subtraction. We do whichever of these occurs first from left to right. So let's look at this first problem here. So this actually has two operations, addition and multiplication. This is not a subtraction sign, it's just a negative sign. So normally we would perform multiplication first, but because the addition is in the brackets, we will perform it first. So we will have negative three plus seven, which is positive four, and we'll multiply that by five to get an answer of 20, and we're done. Let's look at this second one here. So we're going to perform first what occurs in the brackets. So if we look at these first brackets, we've got actually two negative signs and a subtraction sign. So let's perform the subtraction first. Now note if you have two negatives next to each other like this, they become a positive. So my next line of working out, I'm going to leave the negative 8 by itself. Negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. And then we're going to divide by negative 12. So as mentioned before, if we have a multiplication and division, we perform whichever occurs first from left to right. So I'm going to next do negative 8 times negative 9, which is positive 72. Then I'm going to divide this answer by negative 12. So remember, two negatives multiplied together give a positive. That's why it was positive 72. But if you have a positive divided by a negative, the answer is negative. So 72 divided by 12 is 6. Answer is negative, and we're done. Let's look at this sum here now. So there's a few operations. We have a subtraction. We have a multiplication and a power. So because of bid mass indices, powers is the highest rank out of all of those. So what I'm going to do is leave the 36 and the 3 alone. And I'm going to perform this operation, negative 4 squared. Remember, a square is always positive. Negative 4 times by itself gives positive 16. So now I still have two operations. Multiplication is higher rank, so I'm going to leave the 36 alone. Now, 3 times 16 gives 48. So it's 36 subtract 48, which gives us an answer of negative 12. All right, let's now look at operations with decimals. So when we want to add or subtract decimals, we use the long addition or long subtraction algorithm. So we put them into columns like this. So starting with this sum on the left, we always need to make sure that decimal points are lined up and both numbers need to have the same number of digits. So what I'm gonna do is just put a zero here at the top so they have the same number of digits. Of course, 0.32 and 0.320 are the exact same number. So now let's just add them in columns. So zero plus two gives two, two plus nine gives 11. So you write the one and carry another one. So one plus three plus two gives six. 6, decimal point needs to line up, and then 0 plus 1 is 1. And we're done. How easy was that? So now let's do this subtraction, 2 minus 1.875. So I'm going to line up the decimal points, and I'm going to add zeros to the end of the number so that each number has the same number of digits. So in order to complete this, I'm going to need to do some borrowing. I can't really do 0 minus 5, so what I'm going to need to do is borrow from the previous number, but that's also a 0, and the previous one's also a 0. So I'm going to have to go all the way up here and borrow from this 2. So I'm going to change this 2 into a 1, and I'm going to change this number here into a 10. But I can't do 0 minus 7, so I'm going to need to change this number into a 10, borrowing a 1, so I replace this with a 9. And once again... I can't do 0 minus 5, I'm going to need to borrow from this 10. So I'm going to change this 10 to a 9, and it's going to give 1 over here. So now I can just go 10 minus 5 is equal to 5, 9 minus 7 is equal to 2, 9 minus 8 is equal to 1, decimal point under decimal point, and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. And then I'm done. All right, let's look now at decimal multiplication. 
So when multiplying decimal numbers, first just multiply the digits without regard to the decimal point. So if I want to do 0 0.2 times 0 0.18, I'm just going to start by doing 2 times 18, which is 36. So then we figure out how many digits after the decimal point our answer should have. Now in the question, we had 1, 2, three digits after the decimal point. So that means in our answer, we need to have three digits after the decimal point. So if I put a decimal point here, I only have two numbers after the decimal point. But what we can do is we can add zeros at the start of the number and it won't change it. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.18 is 0 0.036 or 0 0.036. And we're done. All right, let's now look at multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. So it turns out this is pretty easy, but we need to first know what I mean by power of 10. So a power of 10 is any number that starts with a 1 and ends with a number of zeros. So a 1,000 is a power of 10, so is 100, 10,000, 1 million. They are all powers of 10 because they have a 1 followed by some zeros. A number like 20 is not a power of 10 because it doesn't start with a 1 followed by a number of zeros. 111 not a power of 10 because it's not just one one followed by a number of zeros. So the number of zeros in the power of 10 tells you how many spots you move the decimal point. So timesing by a thousand, I'm gonna move this decimal point three spots. Dividing by 100, I'm gonna move the decimal point two spots because there are two zeros in the power of 10. The difference between dividing and multiplying is which way you move the decimal point. When you times, I'm gonna move the decimal point right. When I divide, I'm gonna move it to the left. So 0 0.32 times 1,000, I'm going to move the decimal point three spots to the right. So I move it one, two spots. Now I'm out of numbers. So what I'm going to do is put in a zero there so I can move it one more place. So the decimal point will end up here and the answer will be 320. So when I'm dividing by 100 here, I'm going to have the same problem whereby I want to move the decimal point two spots to the left. So I can move it one spot, but then I'm out of numbers. So what I'm going to do is add a zero. If you add a zero at at the end or start of a decimal point number, it really doesn't change the number at all. So now that I've put the zero there, I can move the decimal point one more spot over here. The decimal point will go here and the final answer will be 0 0.004 and we're done. Turns out we actually need to multiply by powers of 10 when we're dividing decimals. So division of decimals, that's the hardest operation to perform on decimals. So the method I'm going to teach is write the division as a fraction and then you multiply the top and bottom so the denominator is a whole number. So hopefully it'll become clear what I mean in a second. So let's say I want to do 0 0.036 divided by 0 0.02. So I'm going to start by writing it as a fraction because remember this fraction line here just means divide. So what I want to do is I want to make the denominator, the bottom number, into a whole number. So I can easily make this a whole number if I move the decimal point here one, two spots to the right. So you know that moving two spots to the right is the same as timesing by 100. So I need to times this denominator by 100 so that it becomes a whole number. But you also remember the golden rule of fractions. What you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So if I times the denominator by 100, I must also times the numerator by 100. So I can move the decimal point two spots to the right for this denominator as long as I move it two spots to the right for the numerator. So moving the decimal point two spots to the right for the numerator, I get 3.6. And moving the decimal point two spots to the right for the denominator, I get two. So it's so much easier to perform a division by a whole number. So now I just have 3.6 divided by two, which is 1.8. Now, if you're still struggling with something like 3.6 to two. Remember that's saying how many times does two go into 3.6. You can use the short division algorithm when you've got a whole number on the bottom. So of course two goes into three 
once remainder one. Now we definitely need to put the decimal point above the decimal point. They always have to line up. So now I go two into 16 is eight. So you may or may not need to use this short division algorithm when you get to this point here where the denominator is a whole number. It's up to you. All right. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.